Number 8. Matthew Heller and Maddie Gilsall. In the fall of 2021, TikTok user Matthew Heller uploaded a video of a woman later identified as Maddie Gilsall, berating him after rear-ending his Lamborghini Aventador at a traffic light in Tampa, Florida. The video rapidly went viral, earning tens of millions of views and even being covered by several news outlets. In it, Gilsoul maintained that Hella had hit her car from the front at an earlier time, while the man laughed her off and remarked upon the apparent absurdity of his supercar having struck her Audi from behind. As her boyfriend tried to calm the woman down, Gilsoul continued screaming about her new car and implying that Hella owned a Lamborghini because of white privilege. Hella's clip also showed surveillance footage from a nearby gas station, which seemingly proved that the other driver had plowed into his Lamborghini. Hella was praised by social media users for handling the situation like a gentleman and maintaining his composure in contrast to the other driver's outburst. In light of the video circulation, Gil Sol took to TikTok and posted additional footage, which she claimed proved Hella had been at fault first. The video caught by a nearby doorbell camera showed the supercar moving in front of the Audi at the light, narrowly avoiding a cyclist passing in front. Gil Sol maintained that it was at that moment when Hella swiped her car and then attempted to drive away. In one comment, Gil Sol admitted to have rear-ended the Lamborghini in retaliation for the previous incident. The crash generated a massive conversation across various social media platforms, in which a number of users weighed in on who they believed had been responsible, with some accusing Hella of gaslighting the other driver. Legally, the matter remained unresolved as of the latest updates, although Gil Sol had expressed an intention of suing Hella for slander. Number 7. Elif Aksu Austrian supermodel Elif Aksu, age 25, was arrested in the spring of 2017 for crashing a Ferrari Dino in Ibiza, reportedly while under the influence of cocaine. The supercar, estimated at over $500,000, reportedly belonged to her boyfriend, who was only identified as a 44-year-old Saudi millionaire traveling with a British passport. The accident happened in the evening at a roundabout on the Spanish island, where Aksu slammed the Ferrari into a lorry, damaging it on the right front side. No one suffered significant injuries in the crash. Aksu and a male companion, believed to be her boyfriend, abandoned the supercar before local police arrived at the scene. A passerby had reportedly heard them talking about an airplane and alerted the authorities. Officers rushed to a runway at the Codola Airport, where they found a private jet belonging to Aksu's boyfriend being prepared for takeoff, an aspect they'd later interpret as the supermodel's attempt to flee the island. She corresponded to witnesses' description of the driver involved in the crash and was detained before boarding the jet. She later tested positive for cocaine and was arrested on suspicion of driving without a license and driving under the influence of drugs. Aksu, who'd worked with some of the world's top modeling agencies, was released on bail after a friend vouched she owned property on the island. Number 6. Roger Widdenburns 82-year-old Gerald Smith was working as an Uber driver in Delray Beach, Florida in 2016, a job that he'd reportedly chosen so that he could afford to buy medicine for his wife Eloise. On September the 21st, Roger Wittenburns, a health club mogul in his early 60s, had been drinking while having dinner with his then-girlfriend at the City Oyster restaurant. He got behind the wheel of his Lamborghini and drove it at 75 miles per hour in a 36 mile per hour roadway near Federal Highway at Northeast 1st Street. He then lost control of the supercar and crashed it into Smith's Buick, killing him. The authorities found that Wittenburn's blood alcohol level had been nearly twice the legal limit. He subsequently pleaded guilty to DUI manslaughter and also settled a civil lawsuit filed by Eloise, Smith's widow. As per a plea deal, Wittenburn's was sentenced to two years of house arrest as well as 10 years probation, in addition to paying his victim's family $20,000. The initial sentence had involved prison time, but the court commuted it to home detention after taking into account Wittenburn's health, as he'd reportedly had three heart attacks and was also suffering from debilitating back pain. In court, he expressed remorse for his actions and took full responsibility for the accident, noting that Smith had driven his car for many years without crashing. Number 5. Andy House Texas man Andy House bought a Bugatti Veyron 
in October of 2009 and the following month went to drive it on a road next to the Gulf Bay Lagoon. At some point, House drove his $1 million supercar into the water and then left the engine running, which ended up ruining the vehicle as it became infiltrated with salt water. He initially claimed that he'd been distracted by a low-flying pelican before changing his statement to say he was reaching for his cell phone before and then lost control of the supercar. The man's pelican argument was disproven by a 24-second video, subsequently uploaded to YouTube, which was captured by a motorist and his friend. They had been driving parallel to the Bugatti and recording the supercar, which one of them initially misidentified as a Lamborghini before claiming, that'll be mine one day. Moments later, the footage shows the vehicle veering off-road and plunging into a shallow saltwater marsh on exit 4, just off Galveston Island. The clip has since been viewed over 9 million times on YouTube and in the incident's aftermath, the two friends promptly called 911. It later emerged that House had insured the Bugatti for $2.2 million and evidence presented in court suggested he'd purposefully driven it into Gulf Bay. He eventually pleaded guilty to insurance fraud and was sentenced to over a year in federal prison. Number 4. Trevor Heitman On August the 23rd of 2018, YouTube gamer Trevor Heitman, better known as McSkillet, drove his McLaren 650S in the wrong direction down I-805 Hove in San Diego, California. He reached the speed of roughly 100 miles per hour before crashing head-on with a 2010 Hyundai SUV, which was driven by a woman in her 40s and had her daughter as a passenger. Both vehicles erupted into fireballs on the roadway in the collision's aftermath. An 18-year-old Heitman was killed instantly, as were the Hyundai's occupants. A few other motorists and passengers were reported to have suffered injuries in the crash, but not to a life-threatening degree. The McLaren, which the YouTuber had featured in a video earlier in the year, was shown completely engulfed by flames in footage captured at the scene. Roughly 30 minutes earlier, Heitman had reportedly rammed his supercar through the gates of Ashley Falls Elementary School in Carmel Valley, but fortunately no one was hurt. According to his parents, a few days before the horrific crash, Heitman had told them that he was having a meltdown. It was reportedly related to him being banned from trading in-game items associated with the popular video game Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which meant he lost around $100,000 in virtual inventory. Number 3. Saqib Hussein On August the 26th of 2013, Saqib Hussein was speeding through Hall Green, Birmingham, England, in a borrowed Audi R8 Spider. Roughly half an hour before midnight, 25-year-old Hussein was driving at nearly twice the speed limit on a residential street. Sisters Mary and Noreen Ryan, aged 60 and 49 respectively, had been returning from a family birthday party. Hussein plowed into their Ford Fiesta, mangling it to such a degree that the roof had to be cut off to release the two women. The accident was captured by nearby surveillance cameras and it left Noreen in critical condition. She was rushed to a local hospital but pronounced dead on arrival. Mary, who'd been driving, suffered a chipped spine, punctured lung, broken pelvis and broken ribs, but ultimately survived. Hussein initially fled the scene, reportedly telling a barely conscious Mary, I'm sorry, it's not your fault, it's mine. His passenger, Faisal Wahid, also fled after sustaining a broken cheekbone, jaw and eye socket, injuries that left him paralyzed on the left side of his face. Hussein surrendered to the authorities and about a year after the crash, pleaded guilty at Birmingham Crown Court to causing death by dangerous driving and whilst uninsured. The IT worker was sentenced to six years in prison and banned from driving for six years, after a judge had called him a danger to everybody on the road. The judge also argued that Hussein had been showing off, even though he'd claimed to have wanted to test out the capabilities of what he'd described as his dream car. Today's topic was requested by Andre Lewis and Jackson Adams. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Stefan Eriksson In the 1990s, Swedish man Stefan Eriksson, who'd started out as an auto body shop worker, became the leader of the notorious Uppsala Mafia based in the eponymous city about 40 miles from Stockholm. The group was responsible for high-profile, violent crimes rarely before seen in the country. Ericsson later became associated with the UK-based company Gizamondo, which aimed to lead the market in handheld gaming consoles until it became insolvent in 2005. 
a luxury vehicle enthusiast, Ericsson was involved in a supercar crash in Malibu, California on February the 21st of the following year. He slammed a Ferrari Enzo then valued at $2 million into a utility pole while driving at close to 200 miles per hour. The impact was so powerful that the supercar, of which only 400 were made, was cut cleanly in half. Remarkably, neither Ericsson nor his passenger, later determined to have been Irish-born American man Trevor Carney, suffered any significant injuries. The existence of a videotape shot from inside the Ferrari was confirmed by investigators, and it reportedly showed the speedometer giving the 199 mile per hour reading prior to malfunctioning due to the impact. When the authorities found the two men at the scene, they claimed to have been uninvolved in the crash, but it was later proven that they'd been lying. A whirlwind of charges ensued after it emerged that the Enzo, along with four other luxury vehicles allegedly handled by Ericsson, had been unregistered and illegally exported to the US. The supercars totaling over $10 million had been leased in Britain where payments for them had ceased. Ultimately, Ericsson avoided the auto theft charge and instead pleaded guilty to two counts of embezzlement and one count of illegal gun possession for a Magnum pistol found during the search of his Bel Air home. He accepted a plea bargain for three years in jail and deportation. Number 1. Daniel Silver on the evening of May the 10th of 2020, celebrity tattoo artist Daniel Silver was driving his 2020 McLaren 600LT through North Hollywood, Los Angeles, with YouTuber Corey LaBarry as a passenger. The pair had celebrated the latter's 25th birthday at a party earlier in the evening, and sources reported that both men had been drinking. Silver lost control of his high-performance car at around 9.39 p.m. and crashed into a tree before also hitting a street sign. The tattoo artist, who'd appeared on the 10th season of the reality show Ink Master, reportedly attempted to flee the scene of the crash but was stopped by witnesses. The Barry and Silver were taken to a local hospital where the former was pronounced dead. Even though there were reports that Silver had been driving while intoxicated, no DUI charge was ever laid against him. He was first charged with second-degree murder but eventually pleaded guilty to one felony count of gross vehicular manslaughter. On August the 25th of 2020, he was sentenced to one year in prison, followed by five of formal probation and 50 hours of community service. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be gifted a brand new Ferrari once or be allowed to pick out a free Nissan every five years? Let us know in the comments section below.